the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 310, John 9-11 Jesus and Hanukkah Jesus, who loved all people, was like the shepherd who was determined to die for them and carried out his ministry faithfully. First point, faith and obedience can bring a miracle. The sixth miracle recorded in John's Gospel was about Jesus healing a blind man from birth so that he could see. The story of this miracle began with the questioning of the disciples. This question was very revealing of the common thought of the Jews at the time. Many of them believed that this ability was the result of sin. To the disciples, Jesus explained that this was not so. Jesus told them that a blind man from birth would see God's glory. Jesus said the same thing when he resurrected Lazarus from death. Here, Jesus proclaimed that he was the light of the world. This was already declared by the prophet Isaiah. As the light of the world, Jesus healed the blind man. The blind man who could not see from birth believed in Jesus and thus was able to see. His faith had restored him. As such, one person's faith can bring amazing miracles. Second point, the Pharisees who only believed in a segment of God's laws could not fully understand Jesus. When Jesus healed the man who was blind from birth, the Pharisees started to rebuke Jesus for the reason that he healed him during Sabbath. They accused him of breaking the rules about Sabbath. What made this situation serious was that the Sanhedrin assembly attacked based on the law. The parents of the blind man claimed that they did not do anything, as they feared the Sanhedrin assembly, but the man who was healed confidently proclaimed that Jesus was a prophet sent by God. Despite how the Sanhedrin assembly threatened to throw the man out from their Jewish community, he still declared that Jesus was God's prophet. Jesus said to the man, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Next, Jesus rebuked the Pharisee who thought himself righteous. Third point, Jesus who came as the good shepherd claimed that he would sacrifice his life for his sheep. Jesus who was the good shepherd claimed that he was the gate for the sheep. Jesus furthermore claimed that he would give his life for the sheep. Oppositely, Jesus also spoke of the wicked shepherd. Jesus was targeting the high priests and the Pharisees, who were the most prestigious religious leaders during the time. Jesus declared that they were not good shepherds, but rather a shepherd who abandoned their sheep. This saying had its foundation in the book of Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Jesus compared the good shepherd to the bad and then outlined the characteristics of the sheep. Jesus then said that he would continue to save the remaining sheep. Jesus declared that he would not only bless the Jews but all nations. And this once again spurred the members of the Sanhedrin assembly. The reason God selected Abraham was in order to bless all nations through him. However, Abraham's descendants got the wrong idea and accused Jesus to have been demon-possessed. They had no interest in all nations whatsoever. They believed that as Abraham's descendants, they were special and set above other nations. 
does, they were rebuked by Jesus. Fourth point, Jesus taught at Solomon's colonnade in the Jerusalem temple. The Feast of Dedication was a festival made during the Maccabean Revolt of the Hellenistic Empire with the purpose of purifying the temple. During this festival, the people gave each other gifts and also celebrated together. It was during this festival that Jesus came to the Temple of Jerusalem and taught at Solomon's colonnade in the Jerusalem Temple. The Sanhedrin assembly requested Jesus to reveal whether he was Christ. Although Jesus had told them multiple times, they still did not believe and requested to see signs. When Jesus told them again who he was, they accused Jesus of blasphemy. Jesus then spoke again, referencing the Old Testament. After debating with the members of the Sanhedrin assembly during the Feast of Dedication, he left Jerusalem and then went to the place where John the Baptist had baptized him and taught people there. Fifth point, Jesus revealed his powers through the resurrection of Lazarus. Now, we come to the seventh miracle recorded in John's Gospel, and this was the miracle of Lazarus' resurrection. When Jesus heard the news of Lazarus, he waited for God's time and then went to Lazarus' time. This was in order for Lazarus' resurrection to reveal God's glory. However, his disciples tried to stop him in fear for Jesus' life. Jesus told them, that it was not yet time for his suffering. Jesus then revealed why he would heal Lazarus. Hearing this, the disciples plucked up their courage and followed Jesus. Jesus and his disciples arrived, and as Jesus had said, Lazarus was already dead. Lazarus's sisters were unable to conceal their grief, but in this moment, Jesus said something remarkable. Jesus revealed that Lazarus' life would be newly given by Jesus as he governed human life. Next thing they found was the resurrected Lazarus. Jesus healed countless sick people and also raised Lazarus from the dead. When the people heard this, they were in disbelief and they all gathered around Jesus. Some people saw this and started to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. However, some people reported this to the Sanhedrin assembly. Because of this, the Sanhedrin assembly had an emergency meeting. Hearing this, the head of the assembly proclaimed to sentence Jesus to death and justified it by saying that it was for their nation. The Sanhedrin assembly presumed that Jesus would come to Jerusalem during Passover and so planned to carry out their sentence then. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought-after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting-edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.